Well, welcome to another back porch art pouring. So today I'm working on a 16 by 20, and I did do a trial of this on a, I think it was about an 8 by 10, and it turned out really well, so I thought I would, I started over with some fresh paint, I've got my cool colors um, along the side, and I've got my warm colors along the back edge there, and I'm going to pour them in a pattern. Well, this one doesn't really show the pattern that I, that I did the original one in as well, but it's kind of that yin and yang pattern where I have the hot colors in one uh, comma shape and then the cool colors in the other. So, like I said, I, I did this once before. It turned out really cool, and I'll, I have some pictures of that. I didn't tape it, but I have some pictures of that at the end. And, you know, sometimes when I do my ring pours, I will decide how much paint I need, and I will divide it up into two cups because it seems like the bottom of the pour for a ring pour a lot of times gets kind of muddy. So I kind of like starting over again and having a second cup with the same colors in it. So... The first cup I put on completely in, in a regular tree ring pour, and the next one I'm attempting to kind of take around in a comma shape and not having very much success actually getting the shape that I want. Also, I am having a very difficult time pouring from these cups. I have tried this several times. I've tried pinching. I've tried not filling the cup up so full and it, it doesn't seem, it's just not working for me. So uh, here I am trying to pour from high up thinking make, maybe that'll make a difference. It doesn't. Um, so my plan at this point is to buy some reusable cups that have a spout on the end. Uh, basically like a, a, a beaker. Um Okay, so anyway, I'm getting these two comma shapes on there, my yin and yang, and now I'm going to pick it up and swirl it around, and here's where I made a mistake on this one from what I originally did. It took me a while to figure out what happened, but I swirled in the wrong direction. I swirled uh, so that I was going toward the tails instead of away from the tails. Um, which is why I am showing another pour that I did later um, uh, that I, I swirl it in the correct direction or at least the direction to get what I was trying to get so this actually turned out beautiful I love the colors these are colors well within my comfort zone they're very warm I think that's a vermilion that I used for the red and I made the orange with the vermilion and yellow mix. And the greens are very, you know, um, warm. And, and there, the, there's a, a little bit of blue in the one green. So um, so I, I guess the t term would be earthy. I like the earthy colors. So here's the close-ups. And you can see um, got nice little... Um, the ribbony kind of tree ringy parts showing up well some cells not a lot and that's okay I I don't mind if the cells don't show up because the striations are so pretty and also I, I think I forgot to mention I used silver in the cool side and I used a bronze in the warm side and the silver kind of disappeared but the bronze is sticking around a little bit we'll see when it dries because in the past I've mostly had a problem with the bronze sinking or any of the metallics kind of sinking down I'm gonna try some different brands and see if I can get any better luck with it but you can't really I guess you can kind of see a, a wee bit of silver in there and I love where this where these meet up like this it's um, almost frothy looking with the white on it like that so, um, I 
think in the overall, this kind of looks like something that could look like, um, you know, like earth and water, like, uh, n not necessarily a beach, but it does kind of have a beachy cove kind of look to it. And, uh, oh, that's me trying to figure out how the light works with the camera. I'm learning. But I really, really like the little bit of crossover that, that happened between them. Oh, that's a nice blur. Okay, so here are the still shots of the finished pieces. And stay tuned for another pour after these still shots. Okay, so here is the second pour, same style. I uh, added some different colors here. I tried to go a little brighter. Still have, you know, turquoise, green, and blue, but m I think I changed the red from that uh, vermilion to more of a, or maybe I have the vermilion in there with a uh, what's that other? Crimson red. Still using the silver and the copper. And I'm going to fill four cups and pour them on in the same manner, trying to get a little bit more of the yin and the yang. Look to the uh, sh beginning shape. So um, we'll see how that goes. Still trying to figure out how to pour out of those cups, so. Mm. Well, this went better than the last one as far as getting that yin and yang shape that I wanted to get. And now when I move this, you're going to say I'm going to move it. Here I am trying to make sure I go the right direction. I'm going to move it so the tail stays behind, which is what's giving me the swirly kind of look that I want. And it's super cool the way the paint dripped down into uh, the opposite colors and I usually don't like that paint can drip kind of look but I absolutely love the way this turned out and also it has a lot of the same striations that you get from the tray ring pour but it has some amazing cells and I think I'm gonna yeah right here I'm trying to cover my edges and I think that I've dripped something on it and I realize later that it's just the fact that the reds and bronze and black went over the top of the uh, cooler colors and they're just because they're silicone in the paint they're just popping through and so I kept trying to um, fix it and it wasn't until later that I figured out that it's just coming through because that's what it's supposed to do so um, luckily I didn't ruin it because I really and truly could have ruined it. And here goes the torch. Making sure the air bubbles are out and that the silicone has come up. And when you see the close-ups next, you'll see the terrific cells that are in here. I'm very pleased and I'm pleased with how vibrant the colors also are and the way that they kind of have um, fingers of paint going into each other. I don't remember what I'm doing there. I think I was just trying to see how close I could get with the torch without burning it. So along with lovely striations, this piece just has some really dynamic um, cells Look at that with the blue in the middle, just beautiful. They just like, these are the ones I was trying to push away and 
I thought I dripped something on there and I wasn't realizing they were coming from underneath. So they almost, um, you know, sparkle. Maybe the silver is showing up in there. And then these are the fingery areas where the, the cool and warm colors went over the top of each other and kind of intermixed, but still on the overall picture, they still look separate. The two sides look separate. So it's a very cool, cool, um, ooh, look at that. That is so cool looking. It's just a really neat painting. I'm very happy with it. And I finished this one with glossy varnish because I really wanted, oh, I'm sorry about the blurry, but I used glossy varnish because I really wanted it to um, show those colors and, and the, <laughs> I think I lost where I was, Anyway, I wanted to show how brilliant the colors were and to try and get that copper and silver to really show. So here are the still shots. And here's the original 8x10 that I developed this technique while painting. Don't forget to like or comment, subscribe or share, and thank you.